Good afternoon, integration community, and welcome back to beautiful Denver, Colorado. My name is Savannah Peterson. Very excited to be here midway through day two of our three days of coverage here on theCUBE. We've got some of the most VIP guests of the show to kick off our programming today. We've got Simon Kapil and Steve, who is the CEO of Boomi. You've had a huge day. You've all had a really big day. Most importantly, you all got the memo on how to dress the sharpest of any of our Blue. guests. Very impressed, matching jackets. Steve, you were up on stage. You were running around with the University of Colorado flag. You kicked it with Deion Sanders this morning. Yeah, just a regular Casual Wednesday. Casual Wednesday. Yeah, very cash. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So give us a little bit of a recap of what happened this morning. I mean, it was a lot of things. Yeah, it was a lot of things. I mean, the whole low-key Deion Sanders, Coach Prime. I mean, that was actually really he special. He complimented your fit, too. It's the drip, it, yeah. It, it did work. <laughs> it did work. But, uh, you know, first of all, we, you know, we, we obviously wanted to engage with our customers and partners. That's what these events are all about. Mission accomplished. And the second thing was making sure that we share the, the big news around Boomi's integration and automation platform, but expanding into API management, we announced two acquisitions. The acquisition of Mashery from the Cloud Software Group, as well as a technology or company called Apida as well. Big expansion in API management. And then lastly, Boomi's expansion in data management. And really the story there is whether you're, you're looking to drive integration for your business, mm -hmm automation across your processes, or you're looking to innovate with AI, like we announced the whole thing, it's out there. I don't know exciting. any companies thinking about doing that right now. All three, all three. So it's very unique for Boomi, and we think it's, you know, the reality is organizations, they have this massive integration challenge today. Why are you attacking an integration challenge with a dozen or more integration products? That's, that's one integration problem for another. You don't want to do that. Right. Using the singular Boomi Enterprise platform, we can solve all of that in one go. Sounds like a solution most people should want. Kapil, when we were getting ready here and setting up, you've been in the integration game for 25 years. Casual, also casual. Two, two casual gentlemen here sitting with me today. How has the integration journey changed? We talked a little bit about it before we went live, but I want you to bring us up to speed on that evolution. Yeah, sure. So, uh, well, um, 20 years ago, organizations were just trying to connect the data from one point to the other other, right? But in the last past decade, you know, we've seen the rise of APIs and microservices. Uh, clients started building small focused apps, uh, very focused business apps, and they wanted these apps to communicate via APIs, you know? And, and that's where the rise of APIs happened along with digital. Now came cloud, where the traditional boundaries of all this on-prem integration was shattered. You know, clients wanted to communicate on-prem, off-prem, across digital apps. Uh, they wanted all the scalability and the agility, right? Now, when you have this digital first and cloud first, at the same time, clients are building a lot of apps around. So the number of apps increases increased dramatically around us. Associated with the apps, the amount of data increased, and this was all kind of data not just in volume, but also in variety. You know, structured data, unstructured data, streaming data, all of that. Now, obviously, with the, all this kind of data being out there, there was a need to sophisticately handle this data, right? And that's where even different architecture was uh, becoming more and more pre prevalent. Clients wanted to build apps which could leverage the, uh, the event-driven architecture out there. You know, so I think that's where Boomi fits extremely well. It's able to bring in this unification of data from different sources, different protocols, different formats. It's gonna uh, put all of this together and create that protocol. So I would say, yeah, we are at a very exciting times ahead in terms of the future of integration, particularly with AI coming into the mix. And people are using AI now, not just for streamlining and automating the integration life cycle, but also to infuse AI um, into, um, into monitoring the health of the integration and monitoring um, uh, the predictive part of the integration. You know, and I think that's where the future lies to really be able to shift them from uh, the everyday AI use cases to the, uh, the game-changing AI use cases. So that's what I think the evolution has been now, and that's going to be the next decade. You've seen quite a journey, and that was very well summarized. Thank you for that. And you, you mentioned AI, so I want to sit there just for a second. 
couple people in the room talking about it this week and, and in general in our ecosystem. And I know, Steve, you bring this up a lot. Average Enterprise now juggling over 364 applications, like you mentioned. That's a lot. How does, how does AI affect the integration game going a little bit further? Simone, I'm going to bring this to you so you can join us in the chat. Sure. So what is happening with the AI right now, it's, it's a narrative. People are experimenting with it, right? So in the whole life cycle of SDLC process, uh, right from functional specification, design, development, testing, and so on and so forth, AI is going to play the role. So we are, we are also working with the customer, looking at it, that where it will fit in and solve the puzzle of reducing the cost and getting to the market faster. And we have solutions around it, and we are going to see that success in months, not in years anymore. Right. That's an exciting time for everyone. Steve, you said something awesome earlier that when you had Tropicana on stage today, that the juice flows through Boomi. The juice flows through Boomi. That must have been a great moment for you on stage. It made me smile. Why is this customer partnership so magic? Well, we're doing terrific things together, obviously, from both a customer partner and you know solution provider standpoint. And I think everything that you talked about. Uh, we've been you know, successfully doing together for some time, but the, the message that we delivered today and, and kind of why this works is everything is about to change. 30 years in technology, and I can, I, I can promise you everything is about to change. And, and the message that we delivered this morning is everything that humanity has invented up until now, starting with language, how we communicate to modern technology and the like. All of these things have converged to give us this new kind of AI. This is not, is it an apple, is it a giraffe kind of machine learning. This is a new form of consciousness. I'm not the only one out there saying this. I was listening to Eric Schmidt earlier in the week, former CEO of Google, and he talks about the arrival of this technology in the next few years, not 50, mm -hmm. not 10, mm -hmm. five. This technology, in, in my mind, causes us to, to need to rewrite everything we know in enterprise software. Every application you're aware of, Salesforce automation, Ooh. ERP, it's all going to get rewritten because applications, they need to be able to reason and learn. And that's what we're doing right now together right. is building a new set of applications that can reason. And we're building those technologies with, with AI. That's what I'm so excited about is just how powerful this next generation of enterprise applications is going to be, this partnership together, that's exactly what it's all about. Well, it sounds like you guys are decreasing complexity and making things easier collectively. What are some of the trends and challenges you're seeing some of your customers face? Phil, you've got a nice grin on your face, I'm going to you. Yeah, so um, if you look at our customers, I think uh, two or three challenges. Number one, future-proofing integration. You know, that continues to be the problem, right? The architecture that you build today is going to last for long. You know, it, it has to consider all the integration patterns, all the integration requirement, et cetera, beforehand. So the architecture that we build has to be future-proof. It has to be scalable. It has to be flexible. Then the second challenge they face is addressing all the integration patterns, you know. Mm -hmm. Really doing an in-depth analysis of all their application landscape, uh, landscapes, data models, uh, data formats, et cetera, and really building those patterns for tomorrow as well. You know, that's the second challenge, I think. Um, third challenge is, of course, integration sits in the middle, and of course, there are apps, app teams around the corner, um, there are business teams as well. You know, so integration in some sense has to be the stakeholder driving, uh, driving each one of these uh, out there in terms of clear responsibilities and ownership. And the fourth one is the most important. Uh, customers are facing a lot of time uh, spending um, uh, that time on repetitive manual steps while doing integration. And mm -hmm. that's where Steve is talking about, you know, the future of AI infused into integration, right? Where we are no longer doing the routine manual mappings or configurations inside the integrations. We are no longer uh, worried about data quality after integrations, you know, because imagine if there is an AI agent which is going to look at the past data flows and suggest and tell you beforehand, hey, this pattern is wrong, mm -hmm. this mapping is wrong, you're going to land into data issues, right? Imagine the predictive health of your integrations and um, the runtime health of your integrations are um, 
actually notified by AI beforehand, you know, and, and to yeah. some extent or to a large extent, self-healing happens, right? I think those are the kind of issues our um, stakeholders, our integration customers are grappling with because they're putting in a lot of cost. So what if we give them a word where cost is reduced, they're able to get out of this uh, um, um, uh, grappling issue of modernization by implementing a platform like Boomi, which is going to make this all streamlined in terms of data flows and solve most of these integration challenges by infusing AI into the process. So imagine AI really, Steve, uh, ident identifies the integration problems, it self-wires the integrations out there, and then what more? It's able to tell inside the integration, hey, this is the possible problem you're going to get. How do you, dis uh, you know, prevent it before even it disrupts your flow. Well, the, the challenge, what you're talking to, the, the challenge that we all have is these enterprise applications that we believe in, that we rely on, that we trust, none of them were built to talk to each other. Right. One, Oracle doesn't it's speak the language. It's all silos. It is, Oracle doesn't speak yeah. the language of SAP, doesn't speak the language of Microsoft, and they don't want to, and it's not because they don't want to help out customers, that's just not their job. So Boomi's job, with our organizations as well, is to get these applications, these data silos to talk to each other. Not exactly the e easiest thing to do in the world, to your point, but once you've done that, and once you, you have that flow, the logical next question is, how can we make it less brittle, more adaptive, more malleable, so it just senses and then actuates or heals based on how your organization is changing, because organizations are organisms as well. They evolve, they grow and change. Yeah. The, the, the glue, between all these applications must evolve, grow, and change, and that's what we've built, that's what we're delivering. How do you decide what tools are going to help you future-proof things for your customers? And as Boomi being a platform solution for people across verticals, I mean, we've got different models, we've got different pieces of software when we're talking about AI and self-healing. How do you know that what you're helping them build is going to do the future-proofing? Well, and I think you'll, you'll have a few comments on this as well, but I would say don't invent in silos, number one. You, yes, you have I to could get, go across the board for pretty much everything. Yeah, and, and yeah. the road is littered with technology companies that just invented in silos. You know, mm -hmm. great solution with absolutely no problem, no use case, and we, we, I've seen that for 30 years, we all have. Really what Boomi you know, is focused on is how do we take this technology, get it out into the wild, and break it, improve it, iterate. And that's stuff that we do together, and we have done, and we'll continue to do together. To me, that's just a great business practice. Anyone can do it, few do. It's true. It's very true. Yeah. So data is a currency, right? The only job for us is to make relevant data exposure to the people to consume and use that. Right, and that's the moment we get that done, we give the co community the power of inventing. Yes. Right? So that's the, that's the goal exciting for part. us. Yeah. Right. What gets you most excited when you look at what the community is inventing? I'm going to ask all three of you this because I think it's exciting. Yeah, so the power of creation and with your an announcement today with the agent economy, mm -hmm. right? This is really giving power of creation for the developer community. Now, they are not dependent for somebody to tell them what they can invent. They are working with the business directly. Invent, try, uh, see, experiment. If it is successful, launch in the production, right? And that will uh, really speed up the uh, innovation track. And that is what I'm super excited about. Well, when right. you think about you know, how organizations, especially in a technology-driven era, which we are in, right? Uh, this is software, software is not eating the world, it ate the world. Right. <laughs> yeah, so it, it happened, that's a thing. But when you think about solving technology problems, you're normally, of course, you're thinking about code, et cetera, et cetera, but the major business components or business objects within a, a, a need, a problem, a solution, whatever, is you, you've got applications, you have databases, you have APIs. These are common lingua franca type components that we all think about and how do we, piece these together in an interconnected process. That mm -hmm. feels very standard. We're all right. comfortable with that world. We, yeah. have, we have slides and pictures and charts and graphs. What's happening now is these, these AI, and by that I mean semi-autonomous and autonomous agents are being built, not by the dozens, not thousands, but hundreds of thousands, soon to be millions of these agents. We had the app economy, we all remember that. 2007, 2008, we're all guilty of saying it 10,000 yes. 10, times. <laughs> 
Buzzword the, bingo to the, Exactly. Well, the, the agent economy, is it's not just coming, it's here. You mm -hmm. can go to Hugging mm -hmm. Face where they, it is a community yep. for AI. I checked this morning, 640,000 different models. Wow, that's not They've just been uploaded for you to just go get. So if you want Llama 3 and you just, which uh, Meta built, yep. you just want to download it casually. You just can. But there's so many questions that come with that. And here's the question that I will ask, you know, our listeners, you, uh, you, you know, anyone within earshot, two years from now, when you have not hundreds, but thousands of these semi-autonomous and autonomous agents just running around your company, deciding things, chatting with customers, potentially hallucinating and making up corporate yeah. policies or discounts right. or offers, where are these agents being managed? Who, what system are they registering with? Who, who's in charge of the agent asylum? If, if, if you, you know, chaos who's in charge? A little bit. It is. No self respecting CIO yeah. will allow dozens, or let alone hundreds, thousands of these agents to run around their company making decisions, yet that's exactly what we're headed for. What's your advice? I think that's where it is, right? So if you see the economy of RPA, how it happened, right? Mm -hmm. So there are thousands of robotic automation processing happening. Now CIO is struggling. What do I do with these robots? All oh, the robots, right. yeah. Yeah. So what do I do with this RPA technology, right? And now we are helping customer to consolidate it, govern it, manage it, and make it more relevant for the organization rather than just develop and leave it there and it does whatever it does for the organization. Right, so that is uh, definitely a strong point. While we build this agent, we give the economy to the developer community, but it's very important to govern it because you will run out of uh, space, memory, cost, and so on and so forth if right. you don't manage it well. Well, and right. what we're doing, Boomi, with Infosys in particular, which is really exciting for me, is we're helping organizations see that future, right? That it's not just apps and databases and APIs. Very important, that's today, here, and now. But add agents into that mix, and it gets infinitely more complex you can't really tackle that future without having a good grasp on your current today. Consolidating different integration and automation systems on one platform, that's what we've been you know, partnering on amongst yeah. many things, but uh, you know, grateful for that opportunity and certainly a, uh, a compelling opportunity going forward. And I would just like to add, you know, um, adding to what Suman said, you know, it's, it's really a combination of two things. Number one, uh, a tighter governance, and strategy around it, right? Uh, where you have some of the protocols which are defined at dog level, but at the same time, um, giving a lot of freedom and flexibility to the, um, uh, to the different business units for democratization of development as well. So it has to be a fine balance of both these things. But essentially, the way Steve has described about the data reservoirs and the Gen AI agents, you know, which are feeding off this data and giving you meaningful insights, I think you know, it's a future of composability as well, which uh, mm. Boomi is yeah. bringing onto the point. table. Mm -hmm. you know? Imagine this world of, uh, um, um, uh, of uh, the Boomi platform, right, where you have the Gen AI agents, um, which are, um, uh, and you have these apps, which are modular building blocks, right? And they're guided by this hand of Gen AI, where on demand, you could build compos uh, composable apps Right, leveraging the capabilities of these Gen, uh, Gen AI agents and the data around there. And, so, and isn't that kind of, you know, I just want to ask you a question, because you and I talked about this many times, but these enterprise applications that you invest in, it's, it's almost kind of like, you know, they need to be more, you know, kind of headless in nature, and that you can talk to them, understand them, build these hyper-composable solutions between them, so it's less about what they're solving in the UI or UX that exactly. they individually build, and more what you can compose in between them. On demand, yes. Exactly, and hyper automation also becomes a part of that picture. The AI and the RPA part, they come together along with that in the, in the entire equation. Taking a totally different direction as we start to wrap up here, you mentioned your kids in the keynote this morning. What do your kids think about AI? What are they saying? Wow, well, it's kind of one of those things that, uh, so my, my, both of my kids are, they're, they're uh, you know, grown now, but still, they call, they're Gen Z. Yeah. So they're, they're in that Gen Z, and I was you know, kind of like how I answer the phone, how they answer the phone, right? I, their perspective is 100% you know, acceptance, openness. It, and, and I realize that, to both your points on 
governance, security, acceptability, like, the, the, you know, the, the, the uh, you know, I, at, at my age, you know, turning 52 this year, I, 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 you know, I have more conservatism in terms of what I will let into my environment. You know, younger people tend to embrace this technology much, much quicker. The reality is, is that, the, and again, I'll come back to where we started, the apps being built today um, and, and the ones that we're imagining today look nothing like the applications we imagined 20, 30 years ago. They will reason, they will make decisions for us at levels that I, I couldn't have even fathomed just even five years ago. It's cool to think about their, I mean, I feel like their tolerance for, or need for privacy is a little bit lower than the rest of us because they never had it in the yes. same way that we did, but then the notion of yeah. like an AI buddy that helped you out or an agent yeah. that's helping you yeah. live a more efficient life. I don't even life. have an Instagram account. Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I got to get there, so there you, there you go. I'm sure your marketing team loves that at Pumi. They, I know, I know, it's <laughs> yeah. a tough one, it's a tough one. All right, one. last question for you gentlemen, since I'm confident we'll be back here, hopefully in Denver again, because it's so lovely and 100%. then you don't have to commute. What can't you say today in this conversation that you hope we can say next time we get the chance to sit down together? So well, I'm going with you first. See, we are going to see in a year or two, this agents, what Steve is talking about, is going to take over a lot of uh, manual task, and then it is going to innovate on top of it, right? Mm -hmm. The things which we are doing, the way which we are doing is completely going to change. And for the next generation, it's adoption for us. It comes naturally to them, right? When yeah. they take over from us, it'll be an amazing journey to see, right? And then Good we will point. be talking about innovation and productivity rather than talking about I am logged in my silos and code base and things like right. that. It will be gone as a legacy uh, very fast, right? Right. Absolutely, and I agree, you know, uh, with Suman. And, you know, uh, come to think of it, right, we're saving a lot of the precious time for our developers, uh, be it analysis, be it creating project documentation, be it the repetitive map mappings, be it the health of the integration, all of that is work taken away by Boomi, you know, and the developers can focus on something important, they can focus on the more challenging, Tasks, you know, the developers were so focused on the manual work so far, but mm. now they could be focused on the correctness and the completeness of the project. To me, that's a game changer. You know, um, in all the projects, and this is industry wide, innovation and doing something new never seem to have enough time available for it. And I think that time should be available now with Boomi's technology. Yeah, well, uh, so I, do, do I get to go now? You do. Oh, okay, well, <laughs> yes. speaking of time, which I agree with. A year from now, look, I firmly believe that th this, so we'll start at a decade, this decade will be the most productive decade in the history of humankind as we know it. Just look at the light speed level of acceleration. What, what happened when, you know, ChatGPT kind of, you know, and you have to give credit to, you know, obviously Google for inventing large language model concepts. OpenAI really to, you know, kind of bringing that to fruition, but in one short, just look at a year ago, you know, we were just learning what, what, what can ChatGPT do, like write songs in Yoda language kind of a thing. Exactly. And now we've gone to full-blown AI-based engineers that can write yeah. code. Uh, is it, you know, general AI yet? No. But I will tell you that in one year, we're going to start having serious conversations about what will humans do with all of this productivity that we're enjoying, either now or in the future with AI, that's the conversation that we're going to start having. Getting the, 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 the kind of you know, muck out of the middle, all the, the manual you know, work that we call knowledge work, I'm not really sure. Getting that out of the way, AI is just going to eat that up. I like it. What are we going to do with more productivity, with more time? We were right. chatting with McKinsey a couple of weeks ago and they talked about how the dog's going to benefit because we're going to spend more time walking the dog. That's right. we'll have yeah, all these we, someone might say three day work week. Who I knows? love it. I love yeah, it. I'm, I'm, I am not. I was going to say, wait, is that, a, is that another announcement <laughs> yeah. that Boomi's making at this yeah, yeah. show? No, maybe, maybe, definitely maybe next not. time. Well, uh, Steve Kapil, Swan, thank you so much for being here with us on the show. This has been absolutely fantastic and congratulations on many years of partnership and all the big announcements that happened Pleasure. today. Pleasure. Thank you. It's thank you for your time. It's been absolutely wonderful. And thank all of you for turning in, new nerd fam, to our wonderful three days of coverage here at Boomi World 2024. We're midway through day two. Lots of coverage yet to come. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.